17 years ago, these pictures of smiling American guards abusing Iraqi prisoners shook the world, uncovering the dark side of the US's war on terror. The gut-wrenching pictures of sexual abuse, humiliation and torture of detainees at Abu Ghraib prison sent Washington into damage control. Few things undermined the US's claim that they were helping bring democracy to Iraq more than the scandal at Abu Ghraib. The American people are just as appalled at what they have seen on TV as the Iraqi citizens have. The Iraqi citizens must understand that. And therefore, there will be a full investigation and justice will be served. So how did the Abu Ghraib scandal unfold? And what has happened since then? Abu Ghraib was notorious for torture since the era of Saddam Hussein. But after the US invasion of Iraq, it was turned into a US Army detention center for captured Iraqis. During the US invasion, the prison housed many innocent civilians. According to a Red Cross report from 2004, approximately 70 to 90% of the prisoners were mistakenly detained. Most of them were picked up in random military sweeps and checkpoints, and many of them were women and teenagers. On January 2004, Military police officer Joseph Darby blew the whistle on prisoner abuse at Abu Ghraib after reporting the photos he discovered of Iraqi prisoners being abused by several soldiers to army investigators. In April, nearly four months later, the Abu Ghraib scandal broke when CBS News's 60 Minutes broadcast photos showing Iraqi detainees being humiliated and tortured. One showed a US soldier holding a prisoner on a strap made to look like a dog on a leash. Another showed a hooded man standing on a box and holding electrical wires. In recent months, we've seen abuses here under our responsibility. And it's been a body blow for all of us. But it doesn't represent America. It doesn't represent American values. It doesn't represent the values of you, each of you here in this room. Not long after, the New Yorker magazine reported that the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, was personally responsible for authorizing the use of torture at Abu Ghraib. A Senate report in 2008 also confirmed Rumsfeld's ties to the torture in Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay. On April 30th, 2004, a US Army report looking into abuses at Abu Ghraib concluded that numerous instances of detainee abuse occurred between October and December in 2003 in Abu Ghraib prison. The report detailed how prisoners were beaten and sexually assaulted, humiliated and filmed reiterating what was already revealed in pictures. But many of Abu Ghraib's abuses remain hidden, as many survivors did not speak out after their release for fear of reprisals and stigmatization. In at least one instance, the US Army tortured a prisoner to death. Former prisoners of Abu Ghraib say they heard women being raped every night, but little was heard from these women. 11 US soldiers were convicted of crimes relating to the Abu Ghraib scandal, while many others involved were not charged, but simply reprimanded. Two years after the scandal, in 2006, the prison was handed over to Iraqi authorities, and eight years later, it was closed down. In 2013, a US private contractor company responsible for torturing detainees at the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq paid 71 former detainees $5.28 million in compensation, a meager amount compared to similar cases in the US. The Abu Ghraib torture scandal greatly tarnished the Bush administration and its war in Iraq, but most importantly, it revealed that like many dictatorships, the US had little regard for the Geneva Convention during its so-called War on Terror. 